think uh, some of these uh, dogs are hauling out. really well designed for the purpose. She's got a sloping uh, bow, so so the deck of the of the, the, the fore deck here gets right up to the log, so they don't have to jump across the water. So they can get right up to the log, they put the cable around the log, uh, and then hook the cable through this big shackle, uh, and then they can go through these, these little shackles up there. So what they're doing then is these big winches that you see behind you, mm -hmm. that's what powers, uh, that's what pulls them out of the water. Mm. They're really quite monstrous. <laughs> they're, they're steam powered by the same steam that powers the uh, ship. Uh, the smallest one is about 12 tons. They use that mainly for hauling in the anchor. The middle one for the middle sized logs that you like, about 23 ton. And the, the biggest one are about 35 tons. So. It sounds like a lot, 35 tons, but when you think of uh, these, these have been in the water for a long time, and very water so oh, yeah. they could be almost like hauling a concrete column out of the water. Very, very hard. This is a very dangerous uh, and skillful job. It may not look like much, but it takes so careful. There were two winchmen, had to keep an eye on each other, uh, for good reason. They had to be very, very careful because these things spin out of control, if you're not watching, the marker couldn't down on somebody's head. Or the cables could, could fly around and that wouldn't be good either. So he was uh, he was standing behind here, the main winchman, that's his throttle. That increases the steam. The steam you see is going in, I'll show you the boiler in, in a minute. But he's uh, standing here and he's got his brakes. Very important to, to, to be watching those brakes. This is the final major brake if there's a serious. That just shuts it off. It grabs onto the cogwheel and shuts it right off. But he can use the brake actually like a, like letting the cable on and off, uh, so he can control the speed of the cable as well. But extremely dangerous, as you can see. That even the rope is dangerous. It's, uh, it's woven steel, so you could rip your hands apart if you weren't careful. When was this uh, out of commission? 1984. Oh, okay. So 1984. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 1984. Yeah, 1984. Over 30 years ago. Pardon me? Over yes, yeah, so it's been sitting in the water that, that all that time. So, we have seen some boats pulling, like log, um, big loads of logs in the river. Mostly those are tugs. Tugs, yeah. yeah and, tugs. and those logs are log booms that are, yes, are log cable, booms. cable together. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. That wasn't this job, this uh, boat's job. This boat was, was to take the bad logs out of the river. The, the, the most dangerous ones were the, the uh, deckheads. Oh. Because you could only, 90% were on the water, so you could only see the tip. Even, even if you were paying attention, sometimes if you weren't paying attention, that could rip you. Wow, it's like to go for that. Especially the, especially the old wooden ships. Yeah. Very, very dangerous. And then where did they go, the logs? They had to clear dumping grounds up and down the river. Yeah. They cleared the river from uh, down the steep stream all the way up to Mission. So it's quite a, quite a long trip up and down. And when was the Ford log put in? Not till the, the uh, late 70s, I believe. I'm not positive. Because this, before that, this was completely industrial. Right, you're saying. Yeah. Very nice. Very right, we're very glad to have it because it's part of New Westminster's history. Yeah. If you folks would like to follow me, you can. I'll give you a little uh, tour of the insides of the boat. Right. You all go together if that's yep, all right with sure. you. He was just explaining that. Stop. So this is a. This is kind of the guts of the ship. This is where it all happens. Uh, that's so the people come in. Come on in, folks. You can fit. That's oh, yeah. great. Wonderful. So this oh, is a very, far. very powerful boiler. As you can see, it's huge. This goes through about 14,000 liters of water in, a, in a, an eight-hour day. So what you've got here is really a giant steam kettle. Underneath here, you have really heavy-duty oil. 
It's mm -hmm. called uh, Bunker C. Well, it's, it's like tar. So what you have to do is you light a fire in here, and you close up this this door, this door, and there it's like a bit of a jet that fires the oil in, into the uh, into the boiler, and eventually into some fire tubes that are inside the boiler. They had a night a night burner because they need to, needed to keep it going 24 hours a day because it took so long to actually heat it up to get it up to full steam uh, to to actually boil the water. So when you boil water, what do you get when you boil water? Steam. Steam. So yeah, this this was capable of producing somewhere between 150 pounds per square inch or up to maybe 250. Wow. When you got to that high, you, you need to be letting some steam off because that's too much and it could explode. And one of them did. That's mm. another story. <laughs> so this, this steam uh, powered the steering as well. I see those big cables up there. That powers the steering to the big paddle wheel at the back, which you'll see when you go upstairs. Uh, also, those big winches that you see. So that, you can see the, the steam going out, that yellow pipe going out to the winches. That's what powers those winches, and that's, that's what hauls the logs out of the water to keep the uh, river clear. So let's go this way. Most importantly, these men were highly trained. They had to go through their apprenticeship. They were proper boiler, boilermen. They had, well, mainly their training was to do with safety. It's very important to be, to be safe with this because this is very dangerous. If this, if this got up too hot or too, or too much pressure, this could blow. Uh, and back, way back in 1858, during our gold rush, uh, the captains were in a, in a big rush to get the miners up to, to Yale. One of them, captains got a bit carried away and uh, ordered his boilerman to keep on uh, putting on steam and the thing blew up. Wow. Not as big as this, but uh, big enough to blow a hole in the ship and it blew, blew the boiler inland like a rocket, wow. about a quarter of a mile inland. So Thanks. they had to be so careful. If it got to a real panic situation, they could shut sh shut the steam right off. Or in the meantime, if it just it looked like it was getting too much, you could let some steam off by using this safety valve. This is a red sat safety valve. And there's a few more here. So just, you ha as I say, you had to be paying attention a, a, a lot of the time. A lot of the gauges in there, those gentlemen would, would all have to be watching uh, very carefully. So you didn't want to explode. As you're going past here, you can have a look at this diagram that shows how this all works. The uh, the oil is the fire is lit here, and this that oil injector on, on the door will fire the oil through here, through the firebox into these these copper uh, fire tubes, and it goes around uh, three times, just getting hotter and hotter, enough to uh, when it reaches the steam point, and then the steam goes out. The, the, this pipe here uh, into the engine room, and the the, get, the waste gases go out the uh, the funnel. As you can see, even even here, you can actually see this would be waste gases coming out the funnel, and that's that's the ship actually operating. And there's one of the older ones. I mentioned to these good folks that this is the fifth in a series that started way back in 1884. Uh, some of the earlier ones would have been wood or coal. But uh, as you can see, this, this is more likely coal because it's uh, looking very dirty, <laughs> very black and dirty. So the ship had about 15, somewhere between 12 and 15 crew. Um, they didn't often stay overnight, but they did have bunks just in case they had to uh, stay up at Mission at the end of the end of the river. Uh, they had two of two of almost every skill. They had two boilermen. Uh, they had a captain and first mate and two engineers so a lot of doubling up. So come on through and have a look at our wonderful engine room. She looks at it from the outside. Yeah. She's about 135 foot long, including the uh, including the paddle. 
So this is basically very simple technology. It's very like a, 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 lo a steam locomotive. The steam comes through here through, from the boiler that you saw through this uh, T-valve and it's teed off to these two big cylinder engines. If you look at these cylinders, the cylinders are huge and they're attached to what we call the pitman arms, those wooden uh, arms, and they are attached to the paddle wheel at the back. So these are the pitman arms here. So basically what's happening is you're going like this. It's very like a steam, very like a steam engine. Uh, the gears, the main gearbox is down here, and this is operated by and, and, and powered by steam as well. So if you want to go forward, you, you just use it's just forward and reverse and neutral, so not not very complex, but uh, that's how the engineer would, would move. I guess it's back. not quite a neutral then. Pardon me? Just looking at the uh, stop, it's not quite a neutral. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's not operational. Right. Uh, the engineer down here, uh, as you can imagine, couldn't see anything or had, didn't know where he was going. So very important for, for the captain upstairs in the wheelhouse, which we can't go up to today, but that was right up at the top. He would send a message down. Huh. Very simple technology. You've probably seen this in the movie The Titanic. Uh, very simple way of, of giving a message. So, that, so now he's saying full ahead. So the, the engineer knows he's got to go ahead, and then he uses this uh, throttle. Basically what he's doing there is opening this big valve to, to put more steam to the, to the pistons. And that's basically the, 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 the mechanical function of the ship. I'm not an engineer, so I'm, I, I can't give you all the details, but that, that's the basics of how it ran. If you all like to go upstairs, this is Lots to see upstairs on, on the second deck. You can see the big paddle wheel in the back, and uh, there's a young lady up there who will answer your questions. Lots of pictures up there as well. There's some great pictures of the old paddle wheeling uh, passenger ships, the ships mm -hmm. that used to take the miners up to the uh, gold fields mm -hmm. up there. So, for yeah, right up the stairs. Thanks. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. I just need to go up one more far, it's, it's a lot of things.
Kincaid's wheelhouse is um, flows, we're, we're in the process of you know, conservation work. But if you're interested, I can also show you the inside if you haven't been yet. Sure, okay. Yeah, sure. sure. Out of that paddle wheel. Tour of the upstairs, but feel free to look around. There's tons of photos and little. 